Hiya! This video uh, shows the minimum parts required and the basic operation for my single button automated rocket by me, Jay! So let's show which parts we have here. We have the uh, launch pad, uh, we have the engine, Jetpack on. we have a fuel tank, um, an ore drill, uh, a coupler between them, and the coupler is pointing up, and you can see that by the arrow. The arrow must be pointing up at the rocket silo module, the cargo module. Why it's called a silo, I have no idea. Um, and the um, automated uh, module, the automated rocket module. Then you have to connect them all with uh, wiring. All of the power is on the right-hand side. All of the uh, imp data inputs are on the left-hand side. It is not required to keep them separate. You can just join them over and have one line going down. I'm just keeping them separate here for good practices. You'll need some pipe, preferably insulated. Although if you're in space or on uh, a cold planet, having them not insulated is fine. The only thing you don't want is for it to be heated up. You'll need some chutes to offload the rocket. This is just going right straight into the ground. You'll need a computer or a uh, laptop to program the chip with a uh, IC motherboard inside. Um, you will need a lead. Um, you will need a IC housing and you will need an IC10 uh, circuit board. You will also need a way to power the lead, which is why the transformer is here. The transformer supplies power to the data side uh, just to drive the lead. That doesn't need to be very high. And then, of course, you need a power source for the rocket. And you don't need very much for that. So we'll start off by um, writing the code in here. So we'll uh, edit, library, and we will import the automated rocket controller. The reason I have two is because one is the uh, local version and one is the um, Steam version here. So let's import that in overwrite and everything is there. Now first off you'll have you ha you have the option to set um, a few settings here. So fuel low we'll just keep it at 600. Uh, max fuel I just guessed the 1500 but uh, you can set that to anything let's set it to, to 2000. And let's say we only want 100 stacks of, of ore uh, being mined. So um, there is a problem with the um, the comments being too long, you can just cut the comments out carefully. So we're going to put uh, 100 there. And we'll confirm that. And then we will write it. And now we no longer need the computer. We turn the IC on, and this is just to give us the variables on the, um, the inputs here. We'll turn it back off. Don't set inputs with, the, um, with your IC on. Um, even if it's one of your own ICs, because you may accidentally write something to an appliance you don't want. So the first one here we can say is status lead. So we'll choose the lead. There we go. Then we will choose the rocket auto, which is the rocket automation uh, module. And then the fuel tank. And the fuel tank is the only one that doesn't say automated rocket on it. So we'll use module fuel tank. And then we can switch it on. It will automatically. Uh, uh, choose a color. It didn't automatically turn the light on, but that's fine. And the color is red, and that means that the um, the rocket is not safe to launch right now, and it's giving us an error code 906. And if we look, if you look on the um, the Steam page, um, it's giving a fuel ratio incorrect, or because it's empty. Um, no fuel. So the fuel ratio takes priority over the uh, um, the fuel load just because it's the first thing on the list. So let's just give it a little fuel. Fuel is of course um, two parts volatile to one part oxygen. So 33% volatile um, or sorry 66% volatile 30% oxygen. So it's a, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. Twice as much volatile as there is um, oxygen. Now now that we have the correct um, 
amount in there, the correct uh, type of fuel in there, we're now getting a 905. That means the rocket is not minimally fueled enough to launch. So let's just fill it up. Okay, now we're fully fueled and we have a green light and it's giving us code 100. If you look that up, code 100 is ready for launch. And for anybody interested, it took two of these dynamic gas canisters um, to, fuel, to fill the rocket. Uh, a little bit less than two. It was like one and a half or something like that. But uh, uh, you can fill it with anything. So now that the rocket is ready to launch, and it's not in the middle of the day anymore, we can launch the rocket by pushing the lead. Lead turns back on, and the rocket launches. And we see we have a code 200, which means um, it is moving into position. And now it's switched to code 400, which means it is attempting to mine. And you can see the three decimal places past the decimal point is how much is loaded on the rocket. Right now, we have uh, five stacks of ore loaded. Now, let's say that's all we want, and we want it to recall. Push the button, it comes back down. Uh, code 250 means that it's being recalled. The automation system already thinks that the rocket has landed. That's why you have a uh, code uh, 905. Uh, because we wasted fuel um, launching the, the rocket. The rocket will also automatically unload. And there we see a few um, uh, minerals coming down. Okay, now it will automatically uh, take on board anything that's in this pipe. So we just want to put a little more fuel back on. And now uh, we have a green status because the rocket has unloaded and is fueled and is ready to go. And we can see that code 100, um, 000, and we have 300 moles of fuel on board. Now it's still taking on some fuel because there's a pre pressure differential from inside the, um, the, uh, the rocket fuel tank and the pipe. So the higher you have the pressure in this pipe, the faster it was lo it'll load. If this pipe is, um, 100, uh, not sorry, not 100, if it is um, 500 millipascals, uh, then it'll load quickly. Um, the longer your pipe segment is, um, the more fuel can be onboarded. If you have a um, one uh, pipe segment and then one large tank, it will not load as quickly because the way that the game works is the uh, pressure will equalize between the pipe and the um, and the uh, the fuel tank, and then as the pressure goes down in the pipe, it will equalize between the tank and the pipe. There's no flow in this game; it's just a series of valves. So, um, a very long pipe segment is the same thing as having a uh, a big tank track attached directly to it, and there is a minimum. Uh, there there is a load ratio for that. I don't know what it is. So let's launch it again. And it uh, was already on location and mining before it even went out of view. We already have six pieces on board, um, and we will see what occurs, what its, what's, what its natural operation is, getting up to a full, um, a full cargo container. Now we're back here, and we're getting pretty close to two error traps being um, hit at the same time. One is we're close to the tank for to the uh, the storage being full, which is we set to 100, and we're also close to fuel low status. We're closer to the fuel low status than our cargo being um, being full. So we'll see this number, uh, the seven 
or 680 at the end. Count down, and it's going to hit six, 600 in just a few seconds. Now it's uh, 600, and we have an error code. Well, there was an error code to return uh, a moment ago, and now we have a error code 250, meaning that the rocket is now returning. You see the fuel is frozen here. This is normal. Um, I'm not sure why the um, uh, the fuel status freezes, but that's part of the game. That's not the script. Um, we also pretty much instantaneously loaded uh, when we came down to uh, 5,000 uh, moles, and that's because we pre I pressurized this uh, pipe up while we were waiting. We now have an error code 802, which means there is stuff in the rocket, um, and it's not going to launch until it is empty. And then once it's empty, light on. We'll see it automatically launch. Now let's say that we want it to continue to mine, um, but we don't want it to launch the next time around. We can shut off the IC, turn it back on, and that will clear the automatic um, the automatic redeploy option. So now it'll come back, it'll land, and it will just sit there, and we don't need to worry about it. And let's uh, just uh, watch that happen. I'm sorry, that was incorrect. To um, clear the, uh, re the um, redeploy flag, you remove the chip and put it back in. I thought clicking the, um, turning it on and off would have worked, but no, that's not gonna work. I also set it to uh, load only 10 um, or, and then return automatically, and we'll see that happen. And that's come back down. It will offload as before, but now it won't relaunch and it'll just sit there waiting for you to do any kind of input. This is the uh, extremely user-friendly uh, version of the script that I wanted to write. It's got a single button. Uh, at some point in the future, I don't know when, maybe weeks or maybe even months, if I don't get around to it, I will make the I am obsessive and I want to control everything script, which will most likely use um, more than one uh, IC, um, IC10 module, and um, will probably control each individual uh, rocket module independently and communicate with one another through timings and all of that. Um, I also have my um, hydroponic script uh, on the workshop. If you want to try that out, it controls the lights for the um, the the growth of plants, which is um, fairly important. Um, if you don't, if you just let the um, uh, basic light do it, you're not going to get optimal growth. Um, and if you try to control it automatically, it's a pain in the face hole. Um, that's on there as well. I don't have a git. I don't have a GitHub, um, but I might put a link to the Google Drive um, if you need a copy of the script uh, outside of the workshop. Um, if you like the if you like the script, please like it on um, the workshop. That's the only way that scripts get shared around. Um, and make sure to subscribe to it so that you can put it in the game. And that's also how scripts get uh, shared around. If you have a problem or you have a suggestion to add on uh, to the script, please put it down in the workshop comment sections. Uh, please bear in mind, there are only 10 more spaces. Not even 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces to add on to this script. If I had more room, I would have added a lot more error coding and... Um, things to catch, uh, like say the um, the um, the drill's not working. That is a problem with the script. If you do not have the coupler pointed the right way, it will never load the uh, cargo bay and the script will not know that's happening. All it knows is that it's deployed, it's in the right place, and the drills are on. The error uh, variable on the drill does not work properly. Every time it takes uh, or, uh, or in, it switches to um, error equal one and then back to error equal zero when it uh, takes a new um, 
a new piece of ore. So it constantly flip-flopping back the way that back and forth makes that useless. If I was to, going to trap it, I would need a lot more room. That's why we're going to have the obsessive script later. But that's something that you have to bear in mind. Uh, that it has to be pointed the right way so that is not a bug. That is just an unfortunate situation. If you have anything else that's buggy or you have anything else that um, you would like changed, put it in the comments and the workshop. And uh, thank you very much for uh, looking at my script. And see you later.